Hey, what is up, YouTube? Michael Games here today, coming at you with a deck profile uh, of a very interesting deck build. Um, so, it is a rank four uh, ritual beast deck. Now, I know a lot of people are really gonna hate this, and a lot of people are gonna be like, "No, that is so bad, that is terrible." This deck is not designed for a competitive standpoint. It is not designed to be competitively good. So don't you know think that you can just go on out to an event and just go straight out win this win with this deck. Because this is not a competitive deck, this is just more a fun build and a fun idea that I'm gonna be working on over the course of you know the next couple of weeks, trying to figure out a way to develop this, make this deck better, make it stronger, yada yada yada, etc. So Let's get right down into it. So, we've got Triple Conahawk. Conahawk is pretty much your main monster that you're really going to want to try to get in hand. If you can open with Conahawk, you're pretty much set to go as far as the way that you know this deck likes to work and likes to perform. We have three Rampangu. It can get you into Conahawk. Two Ip uh, Apelio and one Petalfin. With two Lara and one Wind. So you still can play around with the actual fusions, but it's not like the main focus and go to of the deck. We have two Foot on Thrasher. Two Kage to Kage, two Summoner Monk, two uh, Tin Goldfish, and two Gobbleberg for our rank four aspect. For spells, we have two Pot Dichotomy, very very good, solidly powerful card in this deck. If you get a good turn one. Like if you get like a good turn one and you can actually do things and you have this in hand, this becomes pretty much immediately live if they kill, you know, your play. And I'll kind of go over that in a moment. We got three Rota. Three of Star Goblin. Three Duality. Now this is actually one of the things that you know people were confused by, you know, as I was playing this. I was like I you know used a couple of dualities like I used the duality in the deck and the person I was doing against was like holy shit you know why would you play duality in a deck that's designed to you know spam rank fours it's it's just a search engine because this deck sometimes can open bad and you don't really feel like you should special summon and go into rank four play so that's when you just go duality and try to get a little bit of setup going. Two MST for back row, Raigeki, Dark Hole, Book of Moon, and for our one trap, Vanity's Emptiness. So, now the way that I designed the deck combo wise to do your main monster you really want is Conhawk because this is going to allow you to first turn. It will set up for you being able to get Lara, so then you can actually make your, you know, ulti ritual these monsters. Although you don't really play off it, but it's really good to be able to get into Lara so that you can. So, a really good first turn open that you can, well, a really good first turn open that you can get basically just takes these three cards Dichotomy. Conahawk and Thrasher. So, what it is, you special summon Thrasher, normal summon Conahawk, Conahawk, banish Lara. Then you overlay for Kage Okage. And you make sure you get your Conahawk into the grave. And then you, of course, you know, would get your Kage Okage off that. So now next turn you're ready to make into rank 4 play. 
Now, if they kill the King of the Feral Imps, you would have a Thunder, a Reptile, and a Warrior in the grave to be able to... You could completely put them back to make Dichotomy live, and then, you know, you can end up using... You know, like, you can draw into another monster, rank 4 with Kage no Kage, and end up with still a target in your graveyard for Lara when you like when you get Lara back to your hand the next turn so it can be a really good I mean just just these two alone makes for a good opening hand but if you can stack a dichotomy in there with it you're pretty much set and good to go for a little while so this deck really is all about spamming rank fours and kind of keeping them you know on the board and just kind of doing stuff with it. It's it's very interesting as to how this deck actually works and performs and how well it actually does. So for the fusions we have of course one of each. I don't have Alti Apelio IRL but that would be Alti Apelio. So you, know, you have one of each so you can still you, know, you can still make your wall, you can still make your searcher if you feel like searching. Most of the time you don't really use your searcher, you'll just ram Pengu this out and get a Conahawk into the graveyard. Most of the time, I mean this deck really, the rank 4 engine just kind of, rev like the, the ritual beast is just kind of for deck thinning, while everything else is just for spamming. That's kind of how it works. So that's it for our fusions. Min X's that you make. King of the Fire Limps, it's just your first turn go-to. If you can get this off first turn, you pretty much have a you know pot of dichotomy set up and ready to go at all times, and you never have a problem with it. But as far as other monsters, Diamond Crab King, really good wall to sit on. Everyone should, by now should know my opinions on Diamond Crab King. If you guys have seen my other deck profiles, I talk about Diamond Crab King quite a bit and how good and overpowered he actually is. A lot of people underestimate Diamond Crab King, but honestly, he's he's not really a monster that should really be taken lightly. Everyone, you know, takes him lightly like, oh, you know, he's not that good. Because, you know, yeah, there's a lot of outs to him. But at the same time, if you let if you don't get rid of it, this tends to become a problem because each turn, if you don't have anything, he's gonna hit you for 3k and he's going to go into defense, and that's going to be a 3k wall that you can't get over. So if you don't get rid of him, he tends to be quite a bit of a problem, and to actually get rid of him, he needs to not have any materials. He's going to have to have attacked you twice, then you'd have to attack into it, take the damage, then he'll switch to attack, and then you get to, you know, have to attack into it again to actually get rid of it. So this guy really can become a nuisance if he's not checked and actually like not gotten rid of. Evil Storm X and a Knight. Obviously, priority Xyz monster. 9 out of 10 times you make this, your opponent scoops because it's just game over. Unless they have a response, it's pretty much just game. It pretty much is always game from that, you know, point of view. Gaga Good Cowboy. I will swap this out in this deck because we don't need this. If anything, I'd swap this for like a Lightning Chidori. We'll definitely put in Lightning Chidori and Giant Hand in the deck. Xe is Rebellion Dragon. This guy is just a blowout to big monsters. Black Ship of Corn. Haven't really been using this guy much. Still have it, you know, just in case, but he's never. He hasn't really been useful. You know, the last couple of times, you know, that I've been, you know, playing, I've never really had to make him. I never had an opportunity where he's actually really have been a good go-to. This will be getting taken out. This is just for deck thinning currently. Um, but really, this will be taken out for probably Chidori or Giant Hand. Um, Papal Operative. Still love this card to this day. Never not gonna love Papal Operative. It really, honestly, is a great monster, and it's probably one of the more underestimated rank fours as of this point because 
a lot of times in games, you know, your opponent, you know, mid game is going to set something because you have something strong on board. You make this, you can flip that set card, and then it loses attack, and it just kind of can seep over it. Gagaga Samurai, really good monster, really good for, as a defense card, and really good as an offense card. I love its effect of how it can, you know, save an attack position monster and basically sacrifice itself instead. And he also is a Blade Armor Ninja, so he can attack twice as well, so that's pretty good. Castell, obviously, pretty much mandatory monster to have. And currently, double 101. Probably sought this out for two Castell and one 101, but for right now, this lineup is pretty good. So let me know what you guys think about this deck. Let me let me know if you guys have any ideas of how this deck can be improved. And let me know what you guys think, because this deck to me is a lot of fun. It's an interesting variation of Ritual Beast, and it's just... It, it to me is a really interesting idea, and I want to make this deck, you know, better, make it more consistent, more, you know... Well, I want to make it better, but I don't exactly know how to at this point. But for right now... I'm liking it. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So thank you for watching, guys. Remember to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.